is Hannah. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to share some books that I find really helpful in identifying beads, mostly glass beads. Um, and then I have some just general uh, antique jewelry books that have a lot of great examples of like glass beaded jewelry. Uh, so first I want to go over some of the very first books that I got. So these are more of like a beginner intro book for beads and these are very broad general uh, books, not just uh, glass. And I really love this book because it is so visual, even the, the cover of it. There's so many beads. And here's the back of it. It's called The Complete Book of Beads. This one is by Janet Coles and Robert Budwig. So every page is just filled with so many wonderful examples, great visuals. I believe this was from, yeah, 1990. So it has like this great 90s feel to it and I, and I love it. It's, it's just got so many things. Uh, how beads are made. It actually shows the Venetian Millefiori beads being shown here on the copper uh, tube. I've actually gone over that in my Millefiori glass video. Uh, shows a map of how some of these beads traveled. Um, there's beads have such a rich history and are revered in so many different cultures. I mean, even in Africa, these were so revered, even more so than gold. And it's, it's just amazing. Um, just to really think about the use of beads, the history, why people use them, like them. I don't mean to go through every page, but um, they even have uh, little like tutorials and even just di what different findings are for making earrings, equipment, supplies you need. So it has really interesting um, uh, designs on all different types of necklaces, earrings, bracelets. And the one, the pages I really like are um, these, they show you, you know, the bone, organic, pearls, and then they just lay them all out nicely, give you a great little quick, you know, identification of what these beads are, and they're just, it's just really great. Here's one on glass beads, just... I mean, this is only a small fraction of the glass beads in the world. Uh, but it has some great examples. Some Czech and Venetian. And we've got the African trade beads. And so many. So I really love this book. I look through it a lot. It's just... It's very inspiring. I love the colors of this. So if you're a very visual person, you would love this book. And most of these books are really inexpensive. This is another one um, that just gen goes over, you know, beads in general. And it goes over the whole history of beads. Now, of course, it doesn't go in depth. It's not that big of a book. But... It does have a lot of um, a lot of the more ethnic type beads, I guess I, I would say. Um, it doesn't really have a whole lot of about European beads, but mostly, you know, prayer beads, uh, Far East, India, Central Asia, Middle South America very short thing on North America beads, so Native American. 
and yeah and then it even goes through more modern so just to show you here it's more um, not not as many examples but really great examples and of you know a lot of great backstory to these beads I have not read through this I've just kind of skimmed through it looked at all the examples here we are in India so I don't really reach for this a whole lot because it, I bought this to see what it said about glass but it has a lot on I guess more Eastern beads I would say um, a lot more tribal and ethnic type jewelry and beads oh almost forgot this though is a really really awesome thing and I, I do look at this um, and it's a bead chart and it folds out really long let's see if I can get it so here's the beginning of it we start we're starting in 30,000 BC and it just keeps going we fold it out all down here and it even let's see does it say yeah it even divides these up into different cultures different countries and then it resumes on the back you just flip it over and it just has this linear chart through time and really cool examples up until about the 80s so this is really cool and pretty handy course it's not going to have every bead on it but it's going to have a great selection of them so I love this book for that bead chart mainly but I do need to um, I do need to read this book it has a lot of interesting stuff in it now I it's hard to find I guess more Venetian or Murano glass bead books in in North America or in the United States I've found some books but they're in other languages or they're overseas and they're really expensive to get so it was hard for me to find some good reference books um, that I could find here in the States and this one has more modern Murano beads which is still great because um, you really find these a lot and I mostly focus on the more vintage antique beads so I, I love the Art Deco um, Venetian uh, beads but let me tell you they're there's just no end to the creativity of, of beads and especially Venetian beads like here's some more modern um, wedding cake beads oh I forgot to say the title of this it's the Venetian glass bead book 24 colorful jewelry projects by Kathy Fox another really expensive book here's all the chapters this one really focuses on um, you know DIY um, make it make it yourself which uh, I find interesting it does have like a small section of like how Venetian glass beads are made kind of a history of it which I've referenced a few times um, like here, they're being uh, lamp worked on the copper mandrel. Just, you know, a general history of the area. 
really beautiful place. And then I do want to say, here. here's a picture of it, that's why I want to mention it, is one big way that we are able to identify like vintage and antique beads are a lot of companies actually had what they called sample cards and they would put each bead that they would design and manufacture on the on a card and they would like sew it on and they would have like their company name sometimes they'd have like a reference number for each one most likely not but this was really great in helping sort of the to date the beads and to tell you like where these beads were made so um i have found a couple of websites that have you know sample cards you can actually buy sample cards most of them are not cheap of like venetian beads check beads and that would be a really cool collection to start but you would be investing a lot of money in that <laughs> so here's you know it's just you know tutorials on how to make earrings and necklaces and you're using Murano beads so it does show you know a few examples of different types of Venetian beads here's one Gemato I've actually had some earrings with the Gemato Italian beads and oh, they're so beautiful. Then we have Klimt beads um, named after Gustav Klimt because they're so colorful and they have gold and they look like his paintings apparently. And then yeah we just have here's blown beads. It gives just like a short description description and it just goes into all these tutorials a little bit of history and like some pictures of uh, Venice and Murano so it is it is pretty interesting oh those are beautiful So yeah, and this, again, pretty inexpensive. Oh, I'll also have links to these books. Um, I normally buy them off eBay. You can normally find the best price for them there or another used book website. I'm sure would have them. So this one's a good one. The three that I reference the most, um, they're all by this lady here, Sybil Yarkstorf, and she has two other books that I don't have, but this one is Baubles, Buttons, and Beads, The Heritage of Bohemia. So this has so much information on Czech glass, um, all the glass made in the Bohemia area. I think there was a map. Yes. There's Gablons there, now called New Gablons. Has a lot of old maps of the areas when like the glass industry was really booming. It's, they still make glass there, it's just a lot smaller. Lots of history. Um, and examples of ladies wearing these jewelry pieces. Just really, really awesome book with great examples. And now this is more than just, you know, check glass jewelry. It's also what they call bijouterie type, um, type items. So like perfume bottles, little trinkets, just small glass objects um, that industry was huge and they made so many different things just gorgeous gorgeous artistry here's like the chandelier prisms 
And I love that they included pictures of women of that time actually wearing some of this jewelry. That's something I'm interested in collecting are like these old cabinet cards with these women, you know, in Victorian era actually wearing these pieces. I, I love to see how, how they were worn. And so this is super interesting to me. Of course, wonderful examples of glass in here and buttons. They made so many buttons. Then we're talking about uh, brass stampings, the metal stampings they would incorporate in their jewelry. It even talks about the Niger brothers. I think we skipped that. Actually, I think we're we're getting close. Yeah, here it is. So they have this big section about the Niger Brothers jewelry, filigree work, cameos, natural materials. Um, they used a lot of wood, dyed wood beads in their work. I look through these books so much. There's just so much to read and so many pictures. So, this is a must in my opinion. If you really love Czech jewelry, Bohemian jewelry, glass especially, get, get this book for sure. And the other one Sybil Yarkstorf did is glass beads from Europe. And I at first just overlooked the cover, but look at these Millie Fiore beads. And I just learned that these were called Liberty, Liberty necklaces. So this is just a broad um, book just about glass in Europe goes over the history goes over industries how the beads were used how they were made uh, it even shows the future of bead art and craft a value guide which you know it's not correct today <laughs> but this one has Tons of history, tons of maps. So much to learn, so much to know. And I don't ever consider myself an expert. Whenever I start digging into glass, just glass beads, I feel smaller and smaller and like I know less and less. There's just so, so much to know. And I just try to give what information I can, uh, information that I feel like people are really, really wanting to know, especially identifying things. That I think is a, a really big thing for collectors, for people who resell. Identifying is is a big thing and so is history. I try to share what history I do know, but I could never share everything in these books. So that's why I'm, you know, telling you to get these books and read them. If you really want to know the history, really want to dig in, um, please get these books. They are invaluable. They are, they really are. Yes, this one had a lot more um, 
of like the history and sort of how these beads were used and in other cultures because beads were traded very heavily. They were very sought after all over the world. Um, this one does have really great examples of Czech and Venetian glass. So there's that book, also a must have. And then the last one of Civil Yard Store's book is Glass and Jewelry, Hidden Artistry in Glass. Another one that's pretty broad in here. We go over early glass, neglected treasure, filigree alabaster glass, origin and age, hidden on a little island, um, bead making in Murano. Then we talk about making beads in the mountains in Bavaria, Thuringia, Bohemia, Silesia. I'm sure I said those wrong. How they're made, artificial gems, cameos, Millefiori, mosaic, venturine, once fashionable jewelry, modern design. Again, just wonderful, wonderful examples and history, just like the other glass beads from Europe. How they're made. Yes, this one is another must have. She also um, did another book, uh, was it Eastern Jewelry? Let's see. Yeah, it was like Far East and Africa uh, type jewelry. Um, that's next on my list. And there's also, she did a glass paperweight. So I'm just... These are beautiful mosaic brooches. Oh, I just love them. So much work in those. So many examples of finished jewelry, beads. Morning jewelry. Let's see what else we got. Some molded shut glass. Here's the more modern, <laughs> modern for when this uh, book was made, which I think was the 70s. Oh, no, 1991. Oh, I have not really looked at this. This lists some other books from Schieffer Publishing. Those would be interesting to look at. So, another must have, especially for glass jewelry. Now, these are just, um, they just have some great examples in them. Actually, this one's not glass, but plastic jewelry. I really like this one. This one is 100 Years of Collectible Jewelry by Lillian Baker. This one has the 1999 values. This one's great because it has a lot of examples and it's got a little bit of a history and there's not close up pictures, but they are in color and it gives you just a general description of it and then the year circa dating that um, it was made and then a value uh, well, value of it in 1999 so just so many so this would be well 
I guess they just updated the prices, but this was published in 1978. So this would have been like Victorian era up to, you know, the 70s. So a lot of Victorian and Art Deco pieces are in this book. All different type, uh, the types. <laughs> Oh, that looks like a garnet bracelet. So beautiful. Charm bracelets. Hat pins. Glass jewelry. Bangles. Beautiful celluloid uh, hair combs. I have yet to find any of these, but some of these were so elaborate and so large really beautiful. We have some glass beaded necklaces. There's actually quite a bit and really enjoyed seeing seeing those and then seeing what they dated them as. So I have a few purses in here. This is interesting too. It has a glossary of uh, jewelry terms. There was also, let me see if I can find it. Oh, this was interesting. It has types of jewelry designs, countries, predominant in producing those types of jewelry styles. And then it also lists common, you know, material that they used. And then here is um, a lot of jewelry terms for 20th century jewelry. It gives like an explanation for each type. Reference guide. So yeah, this one's really good. It's compact, it's pretty small. And I really like this one as well. This one is just a bonus. Um, I I also love plastic jewelry, especially Bakelite. And here it goes over actually natural plastics and synthetic plastics. And then it it divides it up into jewelry types, so necklaces, bracelets, on and on, and gives a little bit of a history also let's see if we yeah here's like the natural plastics early plastics also went over synthetic and some I had never heard of like parkasine and colloidian but this has wonderful examples color Mostly a few black and whites. If you love plastic jewelry, I highly recommend getting this book. So there, that's my small collection of jewelry books, especially for glass jewelry that I highly recommend. Of course, if you have any books that you would like to recommend, please let me know. I'm always trying to grow my, my library of jewelry references. I do have other ones that I plan on sharing more about, more Art Nouveau, Art Deco jewelry, which is what I really love to collect. So I'll share that later, but I really hope you guys really enjoyed um, seeing these books and hopefully um, you can add these to your collection as well. They are pretty inexpensive. I don't I think the most I spent on a book was $20 and most of them were under 10. So yeah, very, very feasible. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If you'd like to leave a comment, I would love to chat with you. 
I really enjoy hearing your guys' thoughts and any questions that you have. You can also email me. It's in the description below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe. I, I have some more educational videos planned. I have one that I've been working on and I've had to push it back. But I am still planning on bringing it out. I just really want to do the, the video justice. So thank you all again and I will see you guys in the next video.